cells is a closed environmental life support system that's generally used by astronauts or by people living on the moon or Mars to be able to grow their own food indefinitely. This is also using their own wastes to recycle back into plants, the plants then consume it, and then we consume the plants. So then we have a closed support system. This is the first of a set of videos used to show how to create such an environment. The support system that I'm suggesting uses aerobic and anaerobic methods to be able to accomplish this. So like the one that I have right behind me, which has been running for roughly about six months, totally closed and closed to the outside world, uh, we have fish growing in here and plants growing in here as well, and it's been doing fine without it without any really help from the outside world. The more you don't fuss with it or fiddle with it, the better it grows. So I guess I have a green thumb to a certain point, but I sure have trouble trying to grow brassicas in my yard. I, the aphids just kill me. So the way this ecosphere works is actually quite simple. There is a symbiosis between the anaerobic and aerobic microorganisms, and you need to cultivate both of them at the same time. That's not so easy to do. And roughly it takes about two, three years to establish a system where it's actually pretty robust. And the best part about this is these processes and methods are very, very repeatable and very, very strong. So the first set of the second biosphere that I'm creating is to take advantage of lighting on the bottom. So the biosphere I'm putting together is one that has four layers. Four, the layer has the bottom layer has a water table. You have the soil. Then you have the, the the canopy layer, which your plants are growing, and then you have your gas layer. And that has to be all cultivated. So you cultivate one piece at a time. So this takes roughly up to about a year, year and a half, if you're really good at it. But if you're really bad at it, it might take even longer. Step number one is to get your water and your microbiology started for aerobic and anaerobic in your water system. And that will then translate into the upper layers of your system. So the bottom one here, this is, this is aquaponics water down here. And you can see I put a flower pot that was a seed from the aquaponics system itself. I just pulled it out and put it in there. I also fed this system a couple of dead fish and I think they have some puff pastry in there that I was left over. So this system was put together roughly about one week ago. And the flower pot didn't have any algae growing on there, but it was a seed. And you can see now that on the side, on the right side of the pot, you can see there is a lot more algae growing. And look below, you can actually see air or oxygen being produced by the algae. So that means on the anaerobic process, there is enough nitrates to be able to sustain the algae growing so it can actually produce oxygen. So now I know my oxygen is going up in there inside the water, so I really don't have to worry about that. I can tell you right now the ammonia is, is, is really high. This whole entire process where I'm trying to cycle the, the water uh, so that it has the colonies all established for aerobic and anaerobic will probably be maybe about six to eight weeks. So all I have to do is just let it sit there with the lights on and feed it dead things. So one way you can tell that you are, you've cycled and finished cycling your tank that is correct with microbiology of anaerobic and aerobic colonization is that your pH will go down roughly to anywhere between 7.2 to 7.5 by itself. You don't have to use any buffers or anything. But until it goes down there, you're going to have to wait and just feed your microbiology. So then the next step is to put the soil layer on top. Well, the way Mother Nature does, Mother Nature has a water table. The water table is what we just created. Now we're going to put the soil layer on top, but we need to have some sort of well or some sort of way to be able to get to the water or can throw a fish down there or whatever. So you, all right, this time you can grow fish down there if you want. You put in large stones that's on top of the egg crate. Then you put in sand, clay, silt, dirt, and then compost. Now you have to let your biosystem take care of trying to grow all that. So that means another maybe four, five, six months of allowing your biosphere to acclimate. Here's the trick on doing biospheres. You have to cultivate your you have to cultivate your microbiology 
to be able to grow inside of a container. For instance, if you take a plant or you take a, a whole ecosystem and you put it in the small, you take it out of its normal environment and put it into something that is foreign to it, it will then change and will adapt to that particular container. A lot of times it will die because it doesn't have enough food or it's not light or something that it really needs critical to be able to keep that microbiology going. But a lot of times one species will Will, will take over and you'll end up having one particular type of bacteria or a colonization of some sort of microorganisms or animals in there. The same thing goes with a biosphere. You have to cultivate as much diversity as possible to be able to put inside the tank so that it then takes and has all it needs to be able to keep all its requirements and all its productions hosted in a circular in a secular method method where you uh, you have your consumers and you have your producers the biosphere that's behind me has a ton of sensors in it and in these sensors you have all these you have, in this biosphere there's a microprocessor that's right here and there's also one inside it that does all measurements of say methane ozone carbon dioxide hydrogen sulfide oxygen and it does all those all the time and records those and you can see them going up and down and all over the place and eventually it will level out to a point where it stabilizes so this one this particular biosphere is about a year year and a half old and the carbon dioxide in there can range during the day when the lights are on uh, roughly about I, I've had it seen it down as 146 parts per million as, as high as roughly about 17,000 to 25,000 parts per million when it's cycling or it's beginning to get its process going. So ex expect to see really way out chemistry when it comes to carbon dioxide or to hydrogen sulfide. The systems are just working on each other because the colonization of the bacteria or the microorganisms has not colonized large enough to be able to absorb all the nutrients that are being available to it. So. It, so you, you also find out that nutrients available also will dictate how big your colonies are for your microbiology, so depending on how much light, depending on how much uh, nitrates you have, how much nitrites you have. All of those are all, th those all have to grow and have to be established inside the tank before you can actually have a ecosystem that can swing from one chemical area to another. You need to have those animals there. When a chemical, when an ecosystem has has been compromised by putting too much of one chemical in it. Say you put too much carbon dioxide or put too much ammonia in there or too much methane or something. It has to have the standby colonies already available or grown so that they can wake up and say, oh, I have nutrients, I can grow and I can produce whatever I normally produce. But until you have those colonies colonized, then you'll end up having high swings of gases or high swings of chemicals that won't go anywhere because there's not enough stuff there to eat. Does that make sense? So the last part after you, the last part after you finish with your soil and your gases are pretty much equalized, and you can check your pH, and it's gone around to about seven, maybe six and a half for the soil, because the anaerobic has actually started to take over and produce enough acids to compensate for a lot of the bases that are produced by aerobic. You'll then have to put plants in there and you decide what kind of plants you want and depends on what kind of climate that you want to do. So you put the plants in there, again, they have to spend another six months. Close the whole system, make sure it's hermetically sealed with a seal all the way around it, and then allow the gases to exchange. You might lose some plants, you might, um, you might gain a, a tremendous amount of growth. Generally, the case has been when I've put these biospheres together, that the growth is, is, it goes crazy at first and stays crazy. The only thing that is controlled in any of these systems is the light and the temperature, external temperature and light, that's it. I don't touch carbon dioxide, I don't touch, I have no other, the, the, everything is inside that it balances out where I can have during the day 145 parts per million. The amount of carbon dioxide that's in the atmosphere is roughly about 385 to 400 parts per million. In this biosphere, I can get it down or I can go up. You can control it by the amount of light, by the temperature, by whatever you want to do with it. And so you can now create any type of climate that you want. The last stage 
is after you have your plants are established, is to let your gas establish. For more information on biosphere, ecospheres, and cells, please visit us at gardeningrhythms.com. I'm Paul Holofko.